In this series of videos, we're going to take a look at using a horizontal machining center, a tombstone application, with multiple parts on various faces of the tombstone. Before getting into this type of work, you should be very familiar with regular Mastercam toolpaths, and especially the WCS and view creation. Other skills we're going to be using are levels management, view sheets, and verify versus machine simulation. Let's take a look briefly at the situation I have set up. Now I've got all my operations. If I back plot them, we can see they're occurring on my B0 source part. I have a peel mill operation that goes through here, a facing operations that machine these side holes here, and also a facing operation at this 45 degree angle. So I have this part completely programmed how I like it machined. Now let's go back and break down step by step all the parameters and settings I had before I started programming any of this. The first and probably most important thing to talk about is view management. I'm going to go into my WCS view manager here and you should already be very familiar with this before getting into horizontal programming. Now any operation with a check mark is being used in a toolpath. So obviously my B0 face my B270 face, which machines the B0 part side view, and also 315 machining the B0 part angled face. Now you'll notice that I have no work offsets in any of these values here. These are going to be controlled by the toolpath transform. My origin for all these views is the center of rotation, X, Y, Z, 0. If I click on these views here, B0, B270, 315, you'll notice none of these views change. And if I go back to the screen, the origin for all these views is the exact center of rotation of the tombstone. Now through our toolpath transforms, we're going to be able to output a separate offset for each part and for each side of each part. So you'll be able to independently control features. Now related to all these planes, I also have view sheets created, which you can see down here, which helps me manipulate my environment to each face I'm working on. So if I click on B0, squares me up to the B0 face, and I know this is the direction my tool is going to be approaching. And then for instance, the B315 angled face squares me up to the view that I'm going to be using for this feature here. Other view sheets that I have created, if we scroll over, is the parts, which is each component, the stock, my raw material, and the tombstone in fixturing. These numbers I have in front here are the levels that these entities reside on for easily keeping track of them. A few other pieces of geometry you're going to note is this dotted circle here. I use this for my clearance area for all my tool paths to be sure that I'm clear when this tombstone rotates. The other thing I have down here in the center of the tombstone is a singular point. Now the point style is set to circle to easily view from any angle, but that is what I used for my origin so I can easily pick it up. Now an advantage of using the point origin is it's completely associative. So for instance, if my origin needed to change for some reason to the top of the tombstone, I would move this dot to the top. All my view origins would follow and I just need to regen my tool paths. That's a bit more of a sophisticated feature we'll take a better look at later. The next thing we'll look at is our source ops and their programmed planes. So you'll notice the WCS is set to top for every single operation. We do not change the WCS. What we change for the various machining views is the T-plane or tool plane. So B0 for these first two ops and then B270 
for my side machining the holes. And then B315 for doing the angular facing feature. Now onto the issue of verify versus full machine simulation. If I use Mastercam's regular verify, it will show me one part being machined. It doesn't show me the tombstone, vices, or any other of the parts. This may be a good way to go for the initial programming of your source part. However, when we need to look at the whole environment and especially visualize clearances and rotational moves, we're going to need to use machine simulation. And I have my machine simulation toolbar turned on. If you're not familiar with this, I encourage you to watch a series of videos explaining how machine simulation works. Now the machine I have defined is the horizontal front view. My workpiece is from the level 1002. My fixture and stock are from these respective levels. Then when I use simulate, I very nicely see my entire machining environment. The tombstone, vices, and all my components. And now when I hit machine, you can see a completely accurate rendition of what's happening. including the actual tombstone rotations. Now using machine simulation will be extremely useful when we machine on all faces of this tombstone and our program becomes much more sophisticated.